Thank you very much indeed, Peter, there. Well, joining me now to discuss the implications of those results, we have uh, Diane Abbott, who is victorious for Labour in Hackney North. We have Gavin Grant, who uh, was fighting for the Alliance in South End West and lost. And we have Anne Whittacombe, who won Maidstone for the Tories. Diane Abbott, you uh, were victorious in Hackney North, of course, but many of your colleagues were pushed out. And I would suggest to you they were pushed out because of the activities of many left-wing councils, particularly here in the capital. No, I think that's nonsense. What happened in Battersea and what happened in Fulham had nothing to do with the left. It was what we call the yuppie effect. I'm not for nothing is Battersea called South Chelsea nowadays. I mean, Nick Rainsford, a marvellous MP, was pushed out by gentrification in the inner city. And in Walthamstow, of course, they had a rather unfortunate 66% rate rise. But can you on, put your hand on your heart, Diane Abbott, and tell me that people weren't frightened off by the activities of councils like Brent, where Ken Livingston only just scraped in, and, 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 and Lambert? I can because I mean I held my vote. I didn't drop a vote on my predecessor. Um, Paul Botang held his vote in Brent South. The places where we lost seats were where you've had gentrification, long-term changes in the population profile of London. Gavin Grant, it's been, I think you would agree, a very bad night for the Alliance, particularly here in the South East, where you had high expectations. It's been a tough evening, John, as far as we were concerned last night, but uh, we're still there, we're still battling on. I think the Alliance will move forward in the South East, will recover from this and go on to challenge the Conservatives. But surely, if you can't make an impression here in the comparatively well-heeled, well-off South East, what possible chance do you stand of ever holding even a balance of power, let alone becoming the majority party? What we've seen in this election is the country becoming totally polarised, and I think people will re reflect on that and recognise that that's a disaster for Britain, and only the Alliance offers the balm to the wounds. But the, the public don't seem to be taking up that offer, do they? They didn't this time, but we've achieved the second highest vote for the Liberals in the history of British electoral politics on this occasion. That's not quite as bad as it sounds, is it? Let me pick up the point about polarised Britain with you, Anne Whittacombe. Uh, you must be very pleased with your results overall in the South East, but when you look at the map of Britain as a whole, don't you worry that we are now in an even more decide, divided uh, Britain than we were before? No, because I don't accept that at all. I mean, we have seats in the North just the same as we have seats in the South, and uh, if you actually take your South to include a much wider area than the South East, then certainly the Labour Party holds seats. And I think that the uh, continual harping by the media on the north-south divide is in fact very damaging to the nation. I don't believe it actually exists for a moment. Would you not agree, uh, to pick up the point that Dan Abbott was making, that what's, what's helped you is, is what, what she called the yuppie factor, or to put it another way, people putting self-interest before altruism? No, I think exactly the opposite applies. I had Labour voters this time telling me that they weren't going to mess about with the alliance, they were crossing straight over to me because they were terrified, and that was the word they used, not I used terrified of Labour Party defence policy. I'd like to spend some time now discussing with all of you where, where you go from here. I mean, is it your view, Diane Abbott, that if Labour had perhaps given up the red rose and, and flaunted instead the real red flag of socialism, that you would have won this election. Is that the way ahead as far as you're concerned? Where I go from here is that Mrs Thatcher has horrific plans for the inner city. She wants to break up education in London. She wants to take even more money away from Hackney. I mean, where I go from here is defending my people in inner city Hackney. What does that mean in terms of practical policies? I've heard you trot that phrase out before, if I may say so. It's a perfectly valid and... Uh, uh, what I mean by defending my people, my community, is it has, it has been possible in the past to turn Mrs Thatcher aside from one of her policies by actually mobilising mass popular support. And how do you mobilise it? By actually telling people the facts. When people realise that if Ilia is broken up and boroughs like Westminster and City of London are allowed to opt out, schools across London will be impoverished and crippled. I think people across the board, even people that were foolish enough to vote Tory and SDP this time, will turn against Mrs Thatcher's proposal. They've ignored those proposals this time. Why should they take any notice? No, they in the haven't future? ignored them. But as you said, you yourself said, some people have put their own short-term interests, their own pocket, before the interests of the community as a whole. Gavin Grant, what future the alliance? Surely, as many people have suggested, one proposition you must consider is one leader. Norman St. John Seaver said to me, perhaps rather flippantly, the problem with the alliance is it was like entering a pantomime horse in the derby. Does he not have a point? I think there was a lot of confusion on the doorstep with two leaders, let's be frank about that. It was raised continuously and therefore I suspect that the Alliance has got to sit down now, both parties, we're very democratic parties, consult with our membership. Would you support one leader? I would support one party and one leader, yes. And do, but do you think the rest, of, the rest of the party would go with you on that? Given the, the, the major differences there are uh, b between the uh, Liberal Party members and uh, members of the STP, particularly on defence? No, there are differences between some members of the Liberal Party and other members of the Liberal Party, some members of the STP, other members of the STP. But 
within the alliance there's a tremendous degree of unity. We had great efforts made by the other two to split us during this campaign and they sank without trace. On am, that I being, am I being very stupid when I said I haven't actually seen great evidence of that unity you talk about in the past? Oh, well, come and down and look at the campaigns that were run and the battles that were fought. There were no differences between Liberals and Social Democrats out there. We had one manifesto, one campaign, and we worked very hard together. But a major rethink as far as you're concerned for the alliance? I don't think it's a major rethink. I think this was the way it was always going to go for us, that the alliance would have to end up as a single unit, unit and not two parties working together. I'd like to talk to you, Anne Whittacombe, about what policies you think might be advocated now for the South East. Um, there's been talk about injecting more money into the inner cities. If you lived in Hackney rather than Maidstone or in Tower Hamlets rather than Maidstone, don't you think you might be forgiven for saying we've heard all that before? No, I don't because in fact we've had a tremendous uh, programme of incentives for the inner cities. Um, the estate action uh, scheme and the incentives that we've given to industry and to the regions. I think it's totally false to say that we haven't done anything for the inner cities. I, I have to tell you, as, as I know Diane Abbott would tell you, that ain't the view from Hackney and Tower Hamlets. Well, all I can tell you is that with Labour not performing quite so well as they thought they were performing, they haven't obviously convinced people either that they're the party with the solutions. I think the nation as a whole has rejected all these wonderful catalogue of promises that's come out from both the opposition parties, if you classify the alliance as one party, and they've gone for solid reality the reality of the last eight years and they've said they want another five years of it. Will the reality of Tory party policy in future be more money into the health service? You know I'm sure there's a great deal of concern about that particularly again here in the capital which feels reality, it's been starved of cash by your The government. reality of the Conservative Party policy has always been more money in the health service. We have consistently put more money in the health service and we are pledged to continue to do so. Do you think so. the doctors at Guy's Hospital believe you who may be watching this programme? Yes I do because you may be interested to know that on a professional basis I'm a university administrator and one of the medical schools I look after is a Attached to guys. Let me come back to you briefly, Diane Abbott. One question about the leadership of the Labour Party. You uh, wrongly with a group of people who might wish to see uh, a change at the top, either Neil Kinnock or Roy Hattersley. Is that a fact? Is that what you're after? Everybody acknowledges that Neil Kinnock and Brian Gould and the rest of them fought a brilliant campaign, the best possible campaign that could have been fought. No one can take that away from them. And I, would have, and, Sorry, and I would have thought that at the present time, their position's impregnable. What about the future time, though, Diane Abbott? At the end of the day, is Neil Kinnock the sort of leader you want at the head of your party? In an ideal world? It will be daft to answer a hypothetical question. The fact is, we fought a brilliant campaign. We now have to regroup and go forward and defend our people from people like Mrs Whittacombe. And a last word from you on, on, on your prospects? Go oh, I think the Alliance will now move forward. You've just heard the obituary for the Labour Party. They fought a brilliant campaign and got their second worst vote in their electoral history. Ten seconds to respond to that. I think that's absolutely right. I think the Labour Party are a spent force. And I think the time has now come for us to go forward with the Conservatives.